Number 21. Identify the intermolecular forces present in the following solids, and then we have propane, which is CH3, CH2, CH3. All right, so we have to identify the intermolecular forces. The easy way to go about this is to draw the Lua structure of whatever compound that they give you. I know that it's one extra step, but the idea here is that visualization is key. If you can clearly see what the Lewis structure looks like, it would be way easier to identify your intermolecular forces. And ultimately, the goal is to get really, really good at Lewis structures so that you can kind of visualize what this looks like in your, your mind. But for teaching purposes, I'm going to put it up on the screen just so that you can see it. Now, we have tons of videos uh, just designated towards learning how to draw the Lewis structure. So if you need more assistance, you could always check those videos out on the channel. We got you there. Uh, so this one will kind of be like a, an overview. You could pause the video if you want and see if your uh, drawing will match mine. So here I go. When you're drawing organic molecules, which are carbon and hydrogen based, so this is an organic molecule, you're always going to be drawing them, especially if they write them out in a long form like this, you know, each carbon to hydrogen, carbon to hydrogen. You want to write it in terms of left to right. They will kind of guide you. So the first element that I'm going to put down is a C. So C. And that carbon is bound to three hydrogens. And remember, all hydrogens can only have a single bond. So H, single bond to H, single bond to H. Remember the octet rule. Carbon wants to have eight electrons. It's got six right here, so it needs a single bond to the next element. That's the carbon. This carbon has two hydrogens. So one up, one down. It's got one more placement. That's a single bond to the next carbon, who has one H, one H, and one H. Beautiful. All right. There's your propane. Beautiful. Now, since we see it, we can determine the intermolecular forces. And remember, intermolecular forces are forces not within the one molecule. It's if I have two of the same molecules and they're interacting with each other. What are the forces if I did have two of these? So they're forces that are outside the molecule. All right, so we're going from most basic all the way down to the most specific. Dispersion forces. Dispersion forces, all compounds, all molecules have this force. So I don't care what compound they give you, the first one is always a gimme. You got to have at least one force, and that's dispersion forces. This is also known by other names. Uh, so you might know them as London forces or Van der Waals forces, but that's teacher or professor specific. So I would just watch out and see what language your teacher or professor uses. But dispersion forces, that's what I'm going to use. So it definitely has a dispersion force. Now we're getting into more specific uh, forces. Next comes a dipole-dipole attraction. And if you have a dipole-dipole attraction, you have to be polar, and you got to be covalent. But all polar molecules are covalent, meaning that they're all nonmetals. And that's what I have here. I just have carbon and hydrogen, so those are nonmetals. And remember, if you're polar, your whole molecule is asymmetrical. So I'm looking for a difference or no symmetry, right? Asymmetrical, no symmetry. A means without. And um, we're not looking for something that is symmetrical here. So if I draw a line down this, the middle part of the component of the, the molecule, and that's totally legal. You can draw lines down atoms. I have a CH3 on the left, and I have a CH3 on the right. That's completely identical. No difference about that. So this would not be polar. The opposite to polar is nonpolar. So since this is a nonpolar molecule, you do not have dispersion force on dipole-dipole attractions here. The last one is the most specific type of intermolecular force, and it's the, the strongest, hydrogen bonding. But your molecule has to have a hydrogen, but it's got to be bound to a really, really, really electronegative element. So whether that's 
HN, HO, or HF. But I look at my molecule and I have no nitrogens, I have no oxygens, and I have no fluorines. So how could I possibly have a hydrogen bond? So no hydrogen bonding here. This one, since it's purely nonpolar, nonpolar molecules will generally have just dispersion forces. But always draw out that Lewis structure just to show what's going on. And that's it. Should I color this in? I guess so. I got, I got some uh, coloring. I haven't colored in a while. Usually now I'm just boxing. But it's good to color. <laughs> and it's not, not too bad. Okay. Now we're done. Are we done? Am I done? Almost. There we go. Um, yeah. Dispersion forces. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Uh, we're almost at 35,000 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for your support, your kind comments, your sense of community here. I love talking to you guys, and I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. I'm rooting for you on your tests and quizzes, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.